two players coming from the vents. Forrest has it lined up. The flashbang comes in, doesn't do anything. There's no cover. The AK's ready! Oh two headshots in like four bullets. Wasn't keepable last time. This time he might be. Oh my oh, god! What? what is that transfer on the third and simple hit Cirk as well? What's going on, fam? And welcome to another edition of Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into the different esports each and every day of the week. Today, the F for Friday. So it's for first person, I mean, Friday person shooters. Dang it, I screwed that up. Anyway, whatever, either way, I'm Marissa Roberto. This is Zurek Erbuela. And today, we're talking all things Star Series I League Season 7. Obviously, Zurek, you seem very excited about CSGO today because you're wearing the appropriate shirt. Yeah, this is my low key CSGO shirt. Why? E Explain for those who don't well, know Inferno. Okay, so the people who know Inferno mm. know. <laughs> but for the people who don't know, <laughs> there's this little corridor from the T si uh, respawn side mm. that goes all the way to B side, which is why it's called Banana. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Well, I think it's because B side, it's like B, Banana, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think that it makes sense. But anyway. Is there like some kind of split? No, it's definitely just a long corridor, and it kind of just looks like, I guess... A banana. It doesn't look like a banana at all. <laughs> it actually just looks like a hallway, but a lot of a lot of engagements happen there, but it is the shortest way to the B site okay. from the T site. You take banana. Okay, yeah, so you take banana. Uh, next time we talk CSGO, you'll be wearing your chicken shirt? Uh, maybe. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I just like your low-key, hey, we're talking CSGO today, and yeah. I appreciate it, Zerg. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate you, Thank man. You. Listen, uh, we've got a seriously cool dude, I guess. Uh, he's all right. Evan's going to join us in just a second to break down all the action from China, but right now, let's get you hyped with the highlights. I think he's heard everything he needs to know. Two players coming from the vents. Forrest has it lined up. The flashbang comes in, doesn't do anything. There's no cover. The AK's ready! Oh Two headshots in like four bullets. Very different score. Guardian gets close as well with the AWP. That works for him. Standing in flames. Trying to find a shot to upper, but they're not giving it to him. Now they will. He's down to 36, but he's still making it work. Once again, pistols and a single off from Guardian this time. Stealing rounds at B as Renegades try to get the ball planted. They don't have the comfort to do so, and I think they've lost track of where Guardian is. Shots from both. Panic reaction. Oh. How does Guardian hit that? He's pretty much got to cut to Z. We're finding Taylor. Got Guardian it. knows exactly where he's going. What an ace. This simple left alive. Wasn't capable last time. This time he might be. Oh my god. What? what is that transfer on the third and simple hit Cirque as well? Good read. Oh, you can see him. He can indeed. So react to make sure he gets the kill. He's good read from Rez. He's still busy in the front of the site. Very easy to forget about. Connected almost. Oh my god. To find it. Now, satisfaction though, has the round in his hands. Forrest needs to sit pretty here. Just stay put. And one hoping that the other is going to be baited by time. Forrest refusing to move until the bomb is blocked. Oh! has the angle, but satisfaction has no! the shot. That's the last ever right there. JW will get one from behind, but is there enough time? Oh. 10 seconds. There is now. He's Blood. got a chance at it. He's got to check it. He's got to check it. Oh, HPJW with two seconds left. He gets toward the hitch, but he's still not safe, and he doesn't know which way to look first. Alu has a chance to surprise, to strike, but it's an AWP, and he has to time that with his teammate, who's gone down, and now he knows. Now he knows where Alu is, surely, that he's going to be coming from around CT. Did he spot the shoulder? He saw it. doesn't matter. He's got away from the bomb. I think he might have. Oh, oh, my God. God. What is that movement? What oh. is that movement? But it costs him. All he had to do was play cover. He got to the open instead. And now who wins the round for Eds? Sergey sitting in the pit, catches off the plant. 14 seconds, they've got to get out. Simple gets only one in return. Jumps up and somehow finds Sergey, but he hasn't found the bomb. He will now, and he goes away from default because he quick. doesn't want to get naded. He also knows there's a flank, and he also knows he needs position. Whoa! He actually gets the first one. He's got a chance. He knows Alu's up close, and he no! sneaks around. Oh, that's what we like from Simple. Down below. He knows now they're behind quad. He's jumped across. Points one. He's got the pistol. He's got the pistol. He's low. Breeze, he's low. And he's got the angle. Does he have the time? No kid. He's got it. Unbelievable. Flamey holds and drops. He has to commit to jumping out, but Flamey might give himself up. No, he hasn't. Ooh. He stood wide. Flamey gets the ball. Electronic leads them to the trophy. Simple led them there with him. Navi are your champions in Shanghai. Trust me, that highlight pack could have included a lot more simple, I mean, as per usual. Uh, listen, don't take my word for it, though. We got to talk to, well, our man, our main man about eSports. We love him so much. Please welcome to the show our friend Evan Petrow. What's up, bud? 
Hey, thanks for having me again, guys. It's great to be on the show once again. Oh my gosh, of course. We're we so happy guy. to have you. Yeah. We love you. We love uh, this guy. I guess for people just meeting you for the first time, tell us a little about yourself. Where are you at right now? Uh, right now, I just made the trip down from Toronto uh, about six months ago to lovely LA, where I'm just doing some work behind the scenes for Immortals Team MIBR, as well as uh, doing a little bit of casting on the side. I'll be doing EPL Pro League, actually, coming up this weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. That will be my start of two weeks doing EPL. So things are going well down here in LA for me. Dang, I know, just Impressive. so much stuff and so much CS. My God, there's just always <laughs> something going on. So yeah. can you talk about Star Ladder, uh, for people that don't live in the CSGO world as much, can you talk about it as like where it sits in the grand scheme of things when it comes to CS tournaments? Of course, I mean, Star Ladder isn't really a major, uh, as we all know. Uh, it's still a premier tournament, 250K going in the first place team. Um, it's still gonna have great teams from all over the world attending it. Uh, some teams do miss out just because, you know, it is not a major, it isn't one of their regular stops for most teams. So we do see some teams miss out, but generally we do have all the top five, top 10 teams attending it. It is a premier tournament, and uh, this one actually shaped up to be a great one as well. We have to start with the top, obviously. Oh, yeah. We gotta start from the top. Now, V, around this yeah. time, they also won the China Star Ladder uh, last year, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Simple pretty much just dominated. Like, I don't even know what the, that level of CSGO was. It just um, seems like standard for Simple. Like, he yeah. just has to come in and dominate every time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I want to know your thoughts about how this team played. Obviously, Astralis missed mm. out on this team, so Navi is, you know, the top dog. Uh, what are your <laughs> thoughts? Yeah, so with uh, Na Navi, I mean, once again, Simple played very well, phenomenal, lights out, nobody can argue that, but I'd like to give a shout out to Electronic, who always gets swept under the rug, kind of, just in the shadow of Simple. I feel like Electronic is a staple in that team, he's done so much for that team in and out throughout that tournament, um, but yeah, going back to Simple, when you have a player of that caliber on your team, it's almost as if, as long as two other players on your team show up, you're gonna win that tournament and for you know astralis not to be in attendance and it just be you know navi um really at the forefront of that tournament honestly it felt like a breeze in my opinion watching it for them yeah a couple of the matches were close but once simple comes to play yeah it's pretty much a wrap well navi won the season five uh, asian championship or asia, asia championship um i just feel like is there maybe some kind of china buff for navi <laughs> is there a star ladder buff for navi I don't know, maybe because they're in the CIS region, they don't really have to travel as far as other teams do to get to China. Maybe they're a little bit less jet lagged. Uh, <laughs> or maybe just honestly simple doing simple things, right? And that's that's it. Maybe simple is just really good and really informed this time of the year. And uh, it comes to show, it definitely came to show this past weekend. Uh, it's it's a little weird though, because like sometimes when I when I I mean obviously simple is like an amazing player, no <laughs> yeah. doubt. But yeah. there are yeah. moments where I'm sometimes kind of like, is it him or is it his name that sometimes makes it seem like the other players kind of just like freeze when they they're oh. like, oh, simple is still alive, you know? It's like oh. the boss battle, right? <gasps> it, it, do you think that there's some sort of like kind of like, fear. It's, yeah, it's like a fear, yeah. a fear factor. It's not necessarily, I wouldn't say it's a fear factor, mm -hmm. but it is definitely in the back of your head. I think I think everybody will think of it, you know, they hit that 1v3 situation, and you know, maybe if it was a Zeus or an Edward in that situation, you're sitting there like, okay guys, everybody get ready to peek at the same time. But even with simple, and you're getting ready to come out, you're getting ready to trade that frag, you gotta think in the back of your head, all right, we gotta do this so perfect. If one person's a step behind, simple's gonna exploit that, mm -hmm. get his reset off, pick off the second person, and that's how those clutches develop. So yeah, it's it's not necessarily a fear, but it's one of those things where teams have to definitely take an extra step when you know going into the 1v1 situations, going into the 1v3 situations against them. Because if you aren't going into it well prepared, well, he's going to exploit that from you. And he does it very well. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the highlight, the 1v4 uh, on Inferno, which was just, I mean, my jaw was open the entire time, but to him, that's exactly what I mean. Exploiting, you know, the, the one second that he has to, you know, take out a person, reset himself, look to the second person. He, he, he knows how to manage that time very well. I do want to move on now to Fnatic because they seem to be making a statement here. Um, Brolin and Twist both played really well, but do you think there was maybe the group stage confidence building? Like they went 3-0. 
Yeah, I definitely think Fnatic, this is this was their plan, right? To pick up the young guns, to watch them develop over time and watch them progress into, you know, great players. So it's one of those things where, yeah, Fnatic might not be hitting, you know, the strides that we saw them in 2015, 2016, but they're building towards that again. And this tournament definitely showed that. They had a great performance here. And honestly, with Brolan and Twist in their lineup, if they keep progressing as they are, like we just saw in Star Series, I could see them, you know, breaking through the ceiling. So you think this is going to be a sustainable path for their future? Yeah, I, de I definitely think so. I don't know. I can't really say if they're going to break the top five in the world. Oh. That's a really hard thing to do right now. Uh, but I definitely think they're on their way to doing that within the next year. Well, uh, speaking of World Top 8, we got, and also speaking of Swedes, uh, NIP, they had another early exit. They lost to Renegades 2-0 in the quarters. My God, like, what did you see just watching them? How did you break it down? Well, for Nip, I mean, it just seemed like, honestly, Draken, with his him being in the position that he is, he's really just unsure about where he would land on the team, which obviously, you know, it landed him out of the team down the road once Dennis comes back. But for Nip, I feel like they're just going through the motions right now. They're just trying to stay informed. They're just trying to hit, you know, the quarters, the top eights, getting out of groups. That's a big deal for them because for a long time in 2017, I believe 2016, they were not hitting anything, right? They were going out in groups. They weren't qualifying for tournaments. There was a point where they missed a couple majors. So for Nip, yeah, this is the form that they want to be finding again if they want to get back towards being a top team. Will they get there before Forrest and get right, retire? Uh, I don't know about that one, but I definitely think that you know they're where they're sh where they should be considering the team that they have in front of them right now. Force get right, yeah, they pl they play well, they do phenomenal at times, but at this level of Counter Strike and the way Counter Strike is now, they need to be at you know 120 percent all the time to even come close to competing with the Stralis. And unfortunately, they're just not able to do that anymore. And I think that's what's really holding back Nip at this point. So between Fnatic and Nip, is do you think the Swedish scene is slowly getting back on track? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I definitely think the Swedes are coming back to play. Um, but it's just going to take a little bit of time. I definitely think Fnatic is ahead of Nip in that race, and I think Nip is playing the catch-up. But, I mean, you can never count out Swedish CS, right? They were the most dominant Counter-Strike players for decades. And uh, now, I mean, yeah, they're finding themselves a little bit halted, a little bit stopped in their progression of their scene. But I definitely think they have all the skill, all the tools to get right back to the top. Uh, I want you to tell us what you saw in Renegades because they seem to have mm -hmm. a strong showing. They were quite impressive. They took, I mean, a map off the champs, really. They defeated MIBR and FaZe in groups. Were you at all impressed or did you just expect this? Yeah, Renegades is a team that if you've been, you know, talking to players, if you've been watching the scene, kind of the scrims and how they've been developing, Renegades over the last few months has just been dominating NA teams. They've been taking it to the European teams as well. And it shows coming into this tournament, I had no doubt that Renegades was going to do very well. Um, MIBR actually took them down in, at the major uh, that just passed in Katowice. But coming in now, you're seeing Renegades developing more and more. The two new pickups uh, that they picked up, Liaz and Gratisfaction, those guys are playing phenomenal. They've really added a new life to the team, and it's showing in the Renegades play. I'm very impressed with how they're doing, and I think that going into, you know, EPL, they're going to be just stomping through the competition. I think that they're not going to have a problem with their team moving forward. I can see them finishing, you know, top eight, even semifinals guaranteed. Winning tournaments, I think that's still a six-month road that they have to progress down. We have to move on to NRG with Tarek, uh, re yeah. recent addition paying off uh, with the top four finish. Do you think they can return back to their uh, form uh, following yeah. the poor major? Mm. Yeah, I definitely think that NRG is, is where they should be. I definitely think that they've progressed with this Tarek pickup. I felt like their old lineup got really stale and they kind of hit a plateau within their lineup where, you know, they were going to hit these placings consistently, but they would never get up and beyond. When they add Tarek in, he's a high fragger from tier one, you know, the tier one echelon of Counter-Strike. And when he, a player like that comes in, not only does he breathe new life into the team, but he brings more ideas, different play styles, and it definitely shows with NRG. And I mean, when you have a good IGL like Daps behind them, and you add in a strong fragger like Tarek, which is pretty much what they were lacking the whole time. Yeah, you're going to see NRG rise and rise very quickly. I think that moving forward, they're going to break in. They're going to possibly even take down Liquid. 
I want to wow. talk about North because uh, they seem to have a bounce back showing. Um, I mean, they two owed MIBR in the lower four. Yeah. I just think this whole group stage thing, like before the actual main mm -hmm. event, was so weird to me just to follow two. But um, <laughs> they two owed MIBR and then they didn't actually make it out of the quarters. But still, like it seems like maybe things are going well for them. But what did you see? Honestly, I don't know what to think of North. <laughs> Uh, one tournament they're done in groups, they're out early. Next tournament they're making runs. I have no idea where they're lying. Good for them, honestly. Just keep doing you guys. If you guys can keep on this form, that's great. I mean, they have a great economy or a great environment back home in Denmark with them. They have a great structure behind them to actually, you know, develop their players, develop themselves. But yeah, like I just said, I don't know what's going on with that team. Sometimes they're playing well, sometimes Kadian's going off and all of a sudden, Kadian looks like he doesn't even want to be in the server. Sometimes they're just like, yeah, we're one of the best teams in the world. Sometimes they're like, yeah, we don't really want to play Counter-Strike today. It's, it's, they're all up and down, but as far as Star Series went, I was really happy with their finish. I thought they played exceptionally well. Shout out to Valde, who played some of the best CS I've ever seen him play. But do I see them keeping this up? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say no. I, I, I don't really see it. I don't see it. That's the thing about the CSGO, it's such a streaky game yeah. sometimes. It's like yeah. sometimes you expect one team to just be like, you know, the they're one. gonna be the, the top and then something happens and then from that point on they're just gonna bomb the entire tournament and you're no. like, yeah. what what just happened? <laughs> what just happened to that team? And then sometimes, you know, the, the opposite thing happens. Right. Uh, Depends on what they eat for breakfast. Exactly. Kind of yeah. like Vitality. You know, they sn snuck into the event due to Hellraiser collapse, uh, mm -hmm. made it yeah. top eight. Now the French scene is kind of getting better again do you think that uh, vitality is better than g2 now yeah definitely i think vitality made all the right moves i think picking up zywu was probably the best decision that any french team could do, make uh to be honest and g2 they kind of st stuck with their old guns they said hey we're gonna work out these kinks we're gonna get through it we're gonna you know do it together but unfortunately i mean vitality made the moves they should have vitality mm -hmm. said hey let's get the young guns in let's start developing some new talent let's see where this new talent can get to and it's showing um like you just said they snuck into the tournament played played very well throughout the tournament mm -hmm. yeah of course they didn't finish where i'm sure they expected to but with the new lineup with the new player like Zaiwu, i think they're doing very well i think they've definitely cemented themselves as the best french team but they've still got a long way to go uh we need to talk about the flops the misses the fails uh i did already mention mibr because they were knocked out by north uh and then these <laughs> like i mean they both kind of failed they did fail to yeah. escape the group stage what the heck happened so i think mibr has had a lot of pressure on their shoulders mm -hmm. over the last you know four months since the since the brazilian lineup got back together i don't know why i quote quoted brazilian <laughs> yeah evan it's real <laughs> it's not real like that. but since the brazilian lineup got back together there's been a lot of pressure on them essentially and i think that it's kind of weighing down on them when you end up thinking you have to win the fans want you to win this is what you guys came back for you know second place isn't good enough you need to be taken first and then you start going to these tournaments and yeah the major was really good for them but everything else that progressed after was very very rough rough losses um losing to windigo going into the blast in sao paulo and not even catching a win there um at this point for MIBR, they just need to, you know, take some time, relax, take that pressure off their shoulders, come back, and I think it's going to be good now that, you know, we have Blast Miami, and then they're going to be in L.A. Uh, because we have EPL coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're attending EPL. It's going to be less travel for them, more time for them to relax, more time for them to focus up, and I think MIBR will turn it around, definitely. FaZe, on the other yeah, hand. Yeah, FaZe, who, who, to be fair, also got knocked by North. Like, yeah, yeah North, um, what the blood? Yeah. Hey, North does things sometimes. And <laughs> just, uh, uh, but FaZe, looking at FaZe, I just think that it's a team that had their run. Uh, they did really well, you know, going into 2016, 2017. They won a, quite a few tournaments. Um, but where they are right now and with their most recent pickups, I definitely don't think FaZe is on that trajectory level to go back to being one of the most dominant teams in the world. I think that we'll probably see some roster moves within FaZe, maybe within the next couple months. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't quote me on it, but that's just my that's my like speculation. Evan, I'm putting it on a T-shirt. What are you talking about? <laughs> a tattoo. Put it on a tattoo. More Search permanent. Change. Yeah, there it is. Uh, all right, we got to move on to my favorite topic, the oh. meta. 
<laughs> and yeah. all um, of ours. Yeah, so uh, the new Lost Round bonus finally settled in mm. in this tournament. What do, you, did, what do you think is the impact is? Like, did it change the pace of the game? Is it pretty much the same? Um, Golden had a really good quote uh, from Cloud9. Mm -hmm. I was talking to him about it. I was like, what do you think about the new money? What do you think about it? He's like, listen, man, I don't know what's going on, but I have money. I can buy guns all the time, so I'm happy, and this is the way I like Counter-Strike. And that's pretty much what it is. When you're watching it, you're seeing a lot more dollar value put into the pockets of players, and that's allowing them to buy up pistols, buy up the armor, buy up the utility to really get in there and just make something happen almost every round. We still have save rounds. Um, that pe People start to think that, you know, now that this money's changed, uh, there's no save rounds anymore, but teams still do save. It's just the build up at a certain point. Once you hit that point, I think six, I'll say six, seven rounds, you're just literally set on money for the rest of the half. And that allows you to stay more involved. You win a round, you lose a round, you don't get reset, and you're allowed to just buy right back and basically stay in the game. Whereas in, in other games, you win, you lose, you reset. That's pretty much your half at that point. So. I definitely like the new meta. I definitely like the new economy. I think it makes for more exciting CS. I think it makes for a better spectator CS. And uh, I really have no problem with it. Cheers to you, Valve. I mean, well, you're cheersing Valve. Simple, I had words on Twitter, too, for people that were salting on Valve, especially with the with Vertigo coming into the map pool and Catch going out. I, I, I don't know how to feel about that because I feel like Simple was definitely right. It's like, yo, Valve can do whatever they want. It's up to you yeah. as a professional to adapt. Do you agree with him? And do you like this change in the maps? Yeah, I mean, everything with everything to a certain degree, right? If Valve makes the AK a Nerf gun or something, then I think people would be pretty pissed. Or if they make the op, you know, the equivalent of a pistol, people would be pretty pissed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, yeah, when, when Valve, Valve, they're the game developer. If they want to change it up, if they want to, you know, make it more exciting, make the game more competitive, then all to them, right? They've made some great changes to Counter-Strike already that has developed it into a better FPS. So why are we getting mad at them when they say something like, hey, look, Cash, a map that's been there since 2012 of Counter-Strike, is kind of stale. Let's throw in something that nobody's ever seen, nobody's ever played on competitive since I'd say, what, maybe 2002, 2003? So with Vertigo coming in, I have no problem with it. I think it's shaking it up. Um, I definitely think that Cash is a map that, personally, I hate it. Um, I've never, never enjoyed it. But with Vertigo coming in, it's going to make for more exciting CS, and that's what we all want to watch, right? We want to watch, we want to see something that we've never seen before, right? Whether it's Simple's 1v4 or Nico deagling five people by headshot on cash. Um, Vertigo brings in a new introduction of Counter-Strike that's going to, you know, be exciting for the fans. I, I haven't played that map in a while, and I, I also <laughs> do not like Cash. Uh, but we got to move on so to... So bans on Cash. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those maps that's just like, eh. I don't know. Just I'm, forget it. Yeah, just just forget about it. <laughs> uh, we gotta move to uh, roster talk. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the Cloud9 signing Cajun B? Yeah. So Cl Cloud9 has been, you know, experimenting with players. Uh, Cajun B and Vice being the most recent, right? Uh, that mm -hmm. they just picked up. Uh, Cajun B being, you know, the Danish star coming over, and I think that's a great pickup for them. I, I can't really can't really argue with Cajun B coming into the lineup. He's a strong player, stronger than most of the players that Cloud9 has been trying out. So I definitely think this is an upturn for them, and they side him with a guy named like Vice, who's been on Rogue for quite a while, and I feel like they're they they finally kind of got it together. I think they've put together a team that can do some damage. Only time will tell. But I definitely think Cloud9 with these roster moves versus their previous roster moves in the last, you know, six months, I think I think this will be the best iteration of the Cloud9 five since the Boston Major Championships. Evan, uh, we love you so much and love chatting CS with you, obviously, but we are out of time with you, unfortunately, but we will have you back again, friend. Thank you so much for joining us, and obviously, take care of yourself. We'll see you soon. Yeah, have a good one, guys. Thanks for having me on. Loves me some Evan Petrow, some EVP, but uh, Zerk, we need to continue chatting FPS life, mm -hmm. not specifically CSGO. Let's move on, shall we? There's because a lot. there are others to talk about. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we've got a list here, but first I want to talk about Navi signing Quake players to an Apex Legends team. Ke? Yeah, that's a little confusing. The game is very fast so i think the speed will transfer and obviously mm. their aim will transfer but the entire like meta and the way you move and the way you like take your angles or like fight opponents is completely different because i mean in a br scenario you kind you're kind of limited to like what you 
loot versus right. like in an arena shooter where mm. you already have everything. So there are some things that they have to learn, but I think the core mechanic fundamentals of the game will transfer. So I think it's, I think, I mean, I hope it'll work. They signed yeah, yeah. them, so I don't, I don't know what else <laughs> they can do. But signing them and obviously the Quake players signing over means that they're piecing out on Quake, right? So is yeah. it a bad sign for the world of Quake? Oh yeah, for sure. The, oh. I mean, the- You're like, yeah, of course. Yeah. the. The scene has already been kind of like dwindling off the past mm. few years. It, it's been stable, but not like, you know, growing. Because mm. also there's so many FPSs, like literally every almost month, there's something new that pops up, right? I mean, perfect segue, because when you talk about another arena shooter, Shoot Splitgate mm -hmm. is gaining attention now. There's a beta coming out. Explain what this is. Yeah, so it's, again, an arena shooter <laughs> mixed with like Halo hmm. movement. So it feels like Halo, it's a little floaty, but also you can make portals. So there's like mm. portal walls that you can shoot portals two and then you can appear from one side of the map to the other. It sounds a little apexy. Oh, it's a mixture of everything. Okay. It's literally just like this if if Halo, uh, Portal and Quake had a baby, it would be this game. Okay. And it looks pretty fun. Um, it doesn't, I, I mean, because of the movement, uh, the Halo movement that it has, it mm -hmm. feels a little bit slower, but because of the Portal aspect of it, it makes for some crazy flanks, because you can shoot uh, like a portal behind somebody and then uh, shoot it underneath you and Whoa. then appear behind them, because you, it's, it's, it's nuts. You gotta see the footage, because people are like flying around and appearing like from one side of the other. Okay, do you think it would be too difficult to spectate, like too difficult to watch from a spectator standpoint if we were to get into this a little bit more and maybe make it an eSport? Could it usurp Apex mm. on its run? Yeah, I mean, it, the Arena Shooters has always been a better uh, viewer experience mm. than any BRs mm. forever because, uh, for example, Quake is a 1v1, so it's like they just literally follow one person and you're just like watching them <laughs> run around. <laughs> right. I don't know what the format is going to be if this was, if Split Gate was going to be an actual eSport. Mm. I don't know if they're going to do teams or if they're going to do ones. We don't know, it's too early, but the beta is coming up, so if somebody has codes, you know, throw it our way. Yo, like Zurich states. wants in. Yeah, give me that. Give me some of that codes. He just wants to exact all of his gaming skill on everyone in that beta. Yeah, right. for sure, why not? Mm -hmm. uh, we need to talk about Fortnite for a second because there was a reboot in some way, like a reboot van. So are, like, are, they just, are they just stealing from Apex? Like what's the... Yeah, I mean, okay. that that's what happens. Uh, oh, okay. So, it's kind of funny, but when Apex first released and then they, you know, showed everybody that how intuitive their ping system is, the very next patch, Fortnite added that exact same ping system. So, I mean, now everybody was really liking the respawn um, feature in Apex. Mm -mm. And here we are with Fortnite and having a reboot van. Well, they call it reboot van, I'm assuming because respawn is the company also that made Apex. So there's probably, they can't just call it respawn. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. okay. So what, I so said they're like ripping, but calling to their rip, but like not really acknowledging that it's a rip. I, I mean, that that is gonna be it. Like VR in itself was already a rip from something, right? It's just going to be this long line of people copying each other and then seeing a functionality that's like, oh, this is amazing. Like, we should add this to our game. And Aww. since they can't really copyright <laughs> these things, <laughs> people will just keep adding it uh, into their game. So. so what you're saying is say a little prayer for H1Z1, or sorry, what is it now? <laughs> BR? What is it? H1BR? I like don't they even changed know. It. They, they rebranded. The H1Z1. Yeah, but because it's not H1Z1 anymore, mm -hmm. it's it's Z1BR, I think. Yeah, but again, that's that's too old now at this point. Like, it, uh. like it's it's we're always everything is it's like a fad. It's like Apex was, Fortnite was as well. But I feel like these two games has really like pioneered the the path for. I mean, PUBG too, obviously. Definitely. Um, but in terms of different things that it now BRs from here on out has to like be that good. Otherwise no one's gonna play them anymore. So if this new H1Z1 game is not gonna be up to par with the, the three titles I just mentioned, yeah. 
We've yet Uninstall. to see we've yet to see a BR though really take the cake, like the top tier of the cake, be king of kings in mm -hmm. the world of esports. So mm -hmm. I think until that happens, then we can say like which one truly is king. Yeah. Right? Like if it thrives in esports then it then it really has legs. Like it really will have longevity versus oh, yeah. never knowing where it's gonna go next and just following a fad. So we will continue to follow the fads, of course, here every Friday. You every can join Friday. us. We'll talk this FPS life, but it's all the time we have for now. Don't be sad, of course. So we'll be back on Monday with Matt and Lisa taking you through all the LEC and LCS finals in League of Legends. And a final thank you to Evan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Zurich, for joining me here with the banana shirt. Check us on our socials at Squad Day. We'll see you next time.